All right, so we are out here working on the cabin again, and uh, well, we've got insulation up, we've got the ceiling, the roof, um, we've got a couple of the outside walls up, and most of the interior partition walls are in place. Um, next thing we've got to do is, well, finish that one little strip there. And then we've got to put some extra framing up here because we're going to have a uh, porch, um, shade, roof, whatever, coming off the building. So we're going to need to weld some things on so that we can uh, bring our, oh, what would you call it, like our wall, basically from, from the roof down to about there. And then it'll skip a little bit and then I'll go down from there to the, to the floor. Well, to the outside. Anyway, um, yeah, so we've got some work to do on the front before we can start putting tin up. And we've got that other side over there. We just need to put the uh, put the door in, and then we can start putting tin up and on the east wall here. And this is our closet, along with a uh, little secret door going into the utility room there. Um, and then this will be the bathroom. We decided to steal a little bit of room from the uh, utility room to make a bigger shower and whatnot. Um, and then this was going to be a second bedroom, but decided to make that more of a living room area. And so we got the living room there, kitchen, you can see the sink, <laughs> and there's the, uh, the sink um, window. Had to move that down a bit because that extra few inches made it uh, so so you couldn't see if you were a bit vertically challenged. Um, anyway, so that's where we are with this. Oh, actually, that's not where we are. Well, there's more done here. Let's go outside. So we also did this I got our solar mounts up so haven't hooked anything up wired them in yet or anything like that but you can see it's uh, got 20 20 panels they're 395 watts a piece so oh 7800 70, 7900 watts yeah um, so it should be just enough <laughs> then we'll have uh, a little over 500 amp hours of uh, battery at at uh, 48 volts, so that'll give us somewhere near of uh, 25, 25, 26 kilowatts. Um, and then we'll have split phase power with uh, 13 kilowatts of of inverter. And when we get to hooking that stuff up, I'll make some more videos. And and that that is that. So. We're gonna we're gonna finish packing up and then head home and eat. So this week I've been working on uh, <laughs> the Pathfinder. We had uh, our hubs have been grinding a little bit for a while, not too bad, but you know enough to make you think something's going wrong. Um, had a bit of a, uh, kind of a spooky, I guess you'd call it. Uh, drifting like if you're going along at 60 miles an hour it kind of it would kind of drift back and forth a little bit I almost felt like it was out of alignment but it was actually the uh, ball joint on the passenger side steering knuckle or steering not knuckle but on the on the tie rod and so uh, this piece so it's kind of yeah you probably can't see it but it's it's sloppy um, so basically that was letting that wheel kind of wobble back and forth when it was under under tension as it started to yeah, anyway um yeah and then other ball joints were starting to go a little bit and we had the rubber bits uh, in in here that were kind of soft um so they kind of it had been torn and whatever, so they'd, they'd allow it to 
wobble back and forth just a tiny bit. So, 200,000 miles on it though, so that's uh, not terrible. Um, and then we had some of the uh, little, uh, where your where your sway bar here connects to right, right in here on the control arm. It was, hmm, where are, oh, here's the, here it is. So these, these things were a little bit uh, sloppy as well, the ball joints that are in there. So anyway, just a whole litany of little bits and pieces. So I'm replacing everything, including the axles, although they don't seem too bad, but I figure they have 200,000 miles on them. So for 150 bucks, I can replace them now, or I can tear the whole dang thing apart again later. <laughs> and, you know, basically it's, it's 75 bucks a side for the, uh, for the axles. So that's, yeah, I can't, I can't justify tearing the whole thing apart someday in the future just for that. So we got those two. Um, and I got whole new, whole new arms on both sides. So the control arms upper and lower. And uh, but the only thing that we're not replacing is the brakes, because um, we replaced those before we left home, home, <laughs> Minnesota. And uh, yeah, we've we've put about twenty thousand miles on it since then, and the brakes still look perfect. Ah, you can see, I mean, there's the wear indicators on them. So, and same with the shocks and, or the struts, I mean, up front. We replaced the shocks in the rear, but we did not replace the uh, springs. So I've got a set of those. We're going to replace them because it does bounce a little bit because the springs are pretty weak. <sighs> anyway, so I'm going to get back to work on this. Oh, one other thing. The reason I'm replacing the control arms, one of the reasons, is these bolts were all seized. I had to cut them from here, so I couldn't, I could not get them out. I, I tried using a press and I had air hammer and beating the hell out of it with the uh, with the sledge. I only had one of the four bolts on the lower control arm, this one right here, that I was able to get out, and even it doesn't look real good, so. Part of the thing, or one of the things that's holding me up is uh, waiting on UPS to show up today so I can get uh, a new set of bolts for that. The upper ones all came out, but for some reason, probably because uh, salt water and whatever got crammed up into them, the uh, lower ones did not come out. But all in all, that was the only thing I didn't anticipate was not being able to get those out, which also makes me wonder, um, oh, yeah, the... Uh, <laughs> the alignment. I don't think Tires Plus ever did the alignments when I brought this in. It, it kept feeling weird. Even in Minnesota, you know, when we first got this vehicle, I was like, ah, I don't know, it feels like the alignment's off, but they're like, oh no, it's fine, it's fine. And yeah, I end up taking, I'm trying to find one of the nuts here. Um, but I basically cut the, cut the nut in half and uh, just, just, hit it with the uh with the crescent wrench i wish i would have grabbed hmm. okay so i found one of the or half of one of the nuts and you can see here i basically just took a took a grinder with the cutoff wheel and uh cut the nuts in half i didn't really have to worry about getting into the threads and whatever because these are just garbage anyway after the fact um, but anyway, I cut them through there, and then put a crescent wrench on, and just boop, knocked those things off, and so worked great. Um, I actually bent one of my regular wrenches trying to get that nut loosened up, which is why I'm pretty sure that the people at the tire shop never even never even did anything for alignment, because it, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. Who knows? But at any rate, now I can do it for real. And I'll probably, I don't know if I'll bring it to a shop and have them do the computer alignment or if I'll just do do it with a string. Um, I was actually watching some videos on how to do it yourself. And it's like these race guys, they're like, oh, we do it ourselves because it's better than the, you know, the string and the, and the little uh, ruler and whatever is, is, more accurate than the laser alignments you can do on a on a machine. I'm not sure if I believe that or not, but it, uh, 
anyway it sounds interesting and if i can get it close enough that race car guys are cool with it i'm sure it'll be good enough for me driving down the down the highway especially since the first three or four miles will probably knock it out of alignment anyway going over all the dang bumps out here <laughs> anyway i'm gonna get back to work now all right so it's supposed to rain for the next three days so we're back up here at the cabin today we got the we got the tin up on the front uh, a few days ago um, but we had this section right here. Let's see if I can point at it. That little purlin going across the middle there. That's where the roof for the uh, porch is going to attach to. And uh, so we, we got that in today. And then we had the plastic up above. We uh, added a few more layers of tape onto it just to make sure that the, the rain doesn't get at it. We didn't have time to put the, to put the tin up on the other half today. Um, Probably would have actually. We were afraid it was going to start raining or start uh, getting windy, but it's actually completely calm right now. Strangely enough, it's supposed to be like 20 mile an hour winds right now, according to the weather people. Anyway, so this coming week we're going to get solar hooked up, and then we can start working on drywall and other stuff. And well, actually, first we have to get um, wiring pulled and water because the drywall is going to go over that stuff. So, anyway, then we can drywall. We've got uh, some tongue and groove, you know, shiplap type stuff that we're putting in on the front. And uh, the front wall, the north wall of the building. So, um, yeah. Anyway, this is, this is what we've been working on. We're going to... Uh, well, yeah, we're going to work on solar and water and other things. Um, water tanks are going back here. In this, where the where the color's a little different, this this thing here. That's, uh, that's where the two big water tanks are going to sit at. And then we're going to run our water pipes in a trench. Basically there, there, and then there'll be another trench that goes all the way over to there. And then over to the septic and I'm not sure if we'll uh, I don't know somebody had mentioned doing a doing a uh, little pond or whatever for the gray water we'll see if uh, see if they want to do that <clears throat> I'm not sure exactly how we'd work that in um, mainly because we're gonna have the driveway right here but we could we could uh, do a little trench across the driveway and just throw some uh, Throw some uh, Schedule 40 under there. That would hold up just fine to the to the vehicles passing over it. You know, bury it 18 inches down or whatever. Have it pop out over there and just dump out into the desert. That would actually be a good thing. At any rate, I guess this is uh, this is where we are. So I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.